I wouldn't mind beginning the conversation about the theme that you've created in and around your campaign. Should voters solely be concentrated on your leadership over the last eight years versus the issues at hand? No, I think it's a combination of both. Because what you're saying is that the experience, which is uh, you know inclusive of your record, and people will judge that, and on things like housing and on transit. I mean, I reached, you know, I was one of three, but I reached the transit agreement with the other two governments on how to build transit and how to pay for it. We've achieved a lot more on affordable housing with the help of the other two governments than uh, previous administrations had in the city. You've got critics that have said, while the Housing Now initiative is there, nothing has been put in place as of this point. What can we expect in the immediate future in the upcoming term in terms of getting things? In the immediate future, you can expect that there were three or four projects that were adversely affected by the last few weeks really or the last few months interest rates rising and construction costs so that it threw the economic model out of whack of those projects. I've been in the process even during the election of fixing that and finding ways to fix that by simply you know frankly stepping up uh, some of the degree of, uh, of, of contribution from the uh, us and from the other governments and I think you can expect to see those proceed ahead to construction. Should you be elected as well you're also going to carry forward a budget that is going to have a significant shortfall, bigger than you've ever faced before, the city has ever faced before. Yeah. How do you go about reducing that number and making sure that you continue to provide the services that this city needs? Well, the same way we've done before, because there's always been what, what is called the hole in the budget this, when this process starts, because unlike the other governments, we have to balance our budget. So we have to get to an end result that says it's balanced. Um, I will say to you that, you know, that, and I, I, by the way, I would pose the question to people, if, if this problem is as big as you say it is, and it's significant, do they want someone with experience, you know, having done eight budgets to be actually trying to tackle that, or do they want somebody who's, you know, brand new and hasn't really worked in City Hall before? And yet, from the very beginning of your first term, you have said you are not going to raise property taxes above the rate of inflation or keep it below. How do you continue to do that and continue to make up for... Well, I'll tell you this for, at the outset. If we have an affordability problem in the city and everybody tells me, including the media, that their polls tell them this is the top issue, then the worst thing I could do as mayor um, is to pile on and say, well, fine, we'll just add a huge increase in property taxes. Some of the services and the programs in this city have suffered as a result of some of the things that have taken place as a result. You've acknowledged that in the last couple of weeks, that things have suffered, have promised that they will, in fact, get better. Yeah, I'll just say to you, Mark, I, I acknowledge it a lot more than before uh, the last couple of weeks. In April, I moved motions that are on the record at City Council directing the city staff in the case of, say, those garbage cans people love to hate, including me. Uh, can we get a contract that was signed way before I became mayor and change that or, or rip it up? I mean, I wouldn't rip it up unless we could do it legally. But could we do something with that contract to get a better result? I have given direction that I want to see from the staff a plan to make sure that things like the water fountains and the washrooms and so on can be handled much better next year. And I've said we can do better and we will and we must. How concerned are you at this point in time, especially over the last eight years, that there are people in the city that can't afford it anymore. I understand there are people who have moved out of town, say even to work, since they were working from home, they figured, well, I can work from home from a more distant location. That's happened. But I will tell you, this place is still a magnet for jobs, for investment, for excitement, for good culture. Uh, and those are the kinds of things as, as part of the quality of life that I want to maintain and enhance by having more affordable housing. That's why we're doing it. When we talk about um, exclusionary zoning and the missing middle and trying to get more density into residential neighborhoods as they exist now. Um, you've said this is something that you want to pursue to try and make it happen as soon as possible. How quickly will that take place? Right away. I mean, I'm going to move to have those bylaws presented to the council because uh, they have to approve them. But I really believe that attitudes are changing on that because I think people are figuring out that the idea of duplexes and triplexes and fourplexes in many, many neighborhoods across the city, they've been there for decades and no one's complained. In fact, everybody accepts them as a fact of life. They're nice looking buildings. They fit right in. How do you convince the people that don't want this to happen? I think when we go to people and say, look, this is the situation with respect to the shortage of housing and the resultant push on prices because the push on prices is only because there's a shortage of supply. And these are the things we have to do for your children and for you to make sure that there is an adequate supply of housing. And I think most people are going to come around on that and reduce some of the pressure they put on the local politicians, the members of the city council. Should you get elected, you're back to business for four more years. You want the support on the council floor. That's evident. Is there room for healthy debate? If you've got oh, yeah. other councillors in there, aside from using strong mayor powers, making sure that you have the votes go your way, 
Is there room to bring that up on the floor? I am a consensus builder. It's my nature. Anybody who wants to work with me, regardless of whether I did or did not endorse them, I've simply endorsed some people, and this is not anything new. I mean, this has happened in other elections. I've endorsed people that I think have the kind of skill set, or even incumbents who I've worked with before, and I can see I want to work with them again. But you know what? Somebody I didn't endorse who wins, I'd be just as happy to work with them if they want to work with me. We're not necessarily going to see the kind of turnout that we've had in the past. Should it end up th that way, you still get elected as mayor, is that a strong mandate? Well, it's, uh, look, people choose to vote or don't. Did, Vug did Doug Ford get a strong mandate when 43% of the people voted in the provincial election and he got a certain percentage of that? I mean, our system works on the basis people don't have to vote. Uh, they can. I'm concerned about reducing turnouts for elections generally because I think, you know, we want people to be engaged. But, you know, if I win a certain percentage of the vote, uh, you know, you only have to win more, one more vote than the person who's in second place. The size of your mandate only means that people did pay attention, they did vote in very substantial numbers, and that they said yes. And if people felt that strongly against the ideas you were putting forward, I guess they would have come out to vote. At the second debate that you took part in, you said some of these ideas that you were hearing from others are worth discussing from this point forward. How many new ideas will you bring to the table? Can we expect some of those big ideas to be brought up Aside from finishing the job, as you yes, said. Yes, well, and I've put some of them in the window, you know, in this election, for example, it hasn't got much discussion. Yes, there's room for lots of new ideas. I've put forward some. I'm, I'm, I'm going to look over, as I would have done anyway, the, the platforms of my competitors, and I will take any idea that looks like it is worthy of uh, pursuing, and the first person I'll talk to is the one that put it forward.